My name is Ed Piscor. I'm Jim Rugg. Going to take a look at Jack Kirby's In the Days of the Mob, uh, a weird one from Hampshire Distribution Limited, also known as DC Comics. But first, Jim, what do you have? I have Street Angel, superhero for a day, continuing to show off these uh, deluxe oversized image editions of Street Angel, still available, still in print wherever you buy comics, your local comic shop online, wherever you pick these up. Uh, this is my most superhero-esque Street Angel story where we actually have people in capes and tights flying around and doing superhero acts. And it's funny, hopefully, to see Street Angel in that Mayu. But we, uh, you can see how I make these comics on my Patreon. So if you haven't picked this up, do so. If you have picked it up and you want to see a behind-the-scenes look at my original art as well as my zines and out-of-print hard-to-find mini comics, you can get all of that and a lot more on my Patreon at patreon.com slash jimrug. Red Room Issue 1 on the stands today. You guys have made it a hit. Thank you very much, Kayfabe audience. It's going to be coming out on a monthly basis. Murder on the Dark Web for Fun and Profit is the name of the game for this comic series. Uh, you can pre-order the comics uh, at the Fantagraphics website in the link tree below. If you want to read these comics before they hit paper, uh, go to my Patreon, patreon.com slash edpiscor. Three books will get you the archive there, and I have well over 100 pages. It's more than three issues worth of strips up there uh, today. Now let's talk about this In the Days of the Mob book, man. I picked this up uh, at my Ides Hall this year. I had my eye on it forever, looked in it before, read it before in various forms, and uh, I had to get my hands on a copy, wanted an excuse to read it, uh, the Kayfabe channel is my excuse to, uh, is, is where a lot of my comics reading comes from uh, during the week. So I love it, man, and I, I like this cover design quite a bit. It, it disappoints me that this didn't catch on. It's such an unusual kind of project. Like yeah. It feels like I wish there was a whole long box full of these things. This is right after Kirby leaves Marvel. Right. Uh, this is pre-Fourth World. Uh, the way that they tickled his butt to get over there was he was going to spearhead these these magazines, man, In the Days of the Mob, part of the Speak Out series, and then Spirit World, which I don't know if that is also part of the Speak Out series, <laughs> but it's also magazine format in this exact same way. DC Comics created this kayfabe little uh, brand to go along with them, and essentially they they wanted to have something to compete against Creepy Eerie, which right. was pretty popular at the at the time. And that's what Kirby thought this was going to be. He was going to do the first issues of these. And then uh, I, I remember reading somewhere that, you know, he had Wally Wood on, on the horn to illustrate future strips in them. So I think he saw himself as an Archie Goodwin of, uh, of this kind of comic. Man, a very interesting what if. And I love that Jack Kirby gets his name on the cover of this. Yes. Yes. So in the days of the mob, uh, it's like... An episode of like a TV show or something, man, where like this this guy, uh, Warden Fry, is, <laughs> yes, he's like your Uncle Creepy, Uncle e Cousin Eerie, uh, he's the interlocker, he's the Rod Serling mm -hmm. of our program here, and it also makes me think of those like Lev Gleason uh, crime comics where there's that little ghost yes. guy, you know? I love this, uh, I like ink washes. I assume I'm going to give, you know, Vince Coletta, who's the inker for this, I'm going to give him credit for the ink washes. He did the ink. Uh, it, it is uncredited production people okay. who, who, who did the washes. Good so, to clear so that we, up. Yeah, so we don't know who that is, actually. Well, I'll point out his inks, like on these guards. Man, it's shaky cane-esque. Yes. It's really chiseled. Uh, I think everything in this book looks really great. Yes. Yes. Which mm -hmm. makes sense. Kirby's coming to D.C. full of enthusiasm, and uh, this is some A-game Jack Kirby, man, ready to prove himself to the world that it's not just Stan Lee behind the, uh, the the great comics that were done at that time. Check it out, man. They're in Oz right here. Yes. <laughs> this is a bleak comic, by the way, everyone. <laughs> yes, sir, man. <laughs> the uh, Ma Barker story that leads things off, uh, and that's, you know, the Warden Fry, this is, this, this is hell. And Ma Barker is she's there, man. Obviously, she's toast in uh, in real life, but you know he's the conceit is in the prison of hell. You know he could check in with some some of the inmates and then give you the backstory. Check out how how perfectly straight the edges of the ink lines are with these panelless or borderless panels. Mm -hmm. 
it's got to be taped down. Like the, the tape has to be applied afterwards. Like uh, uh, like painters will put the tape for to make a nice clean gutter afterwards. It has to be the edges of these. There's no other way that all these edges are so flawless. And it's unbelievable to think that uh, Vinnie Coletto would take the time to do that. Well, that may be a production thing. Sure. You know, that could be a production piece coming out of like the uh, whoever's doing those ink washes and getting this thing ready to go. Yeah, we launched it to the Mar- Mob Worker. Love it. Love uh, all the scenery. textures, the backgrounds, everybody's outfits. He, uh, Kirby, he's showing some things here. If this is like some of the first, you know, co- comics that he's written sort of like all by himself or whatever, uh, we have, you know, four sons. They all each have their own personalities and he communicates them very rapidly. Like there's no, as a uh, gorilla monsoon would say, there's no wasted movement here, man. This is a beautiful spread. I love the six panel grid, but using that center panel as a wide angle. And then that's got to be a reference to uh, the searchers, right? That, that bottom left panel. Right. It feels like that's one of those famous compositions that uh, a lot of people use. Yes. And and that's, uh, that's, that's Pa Barker, who's a cucked out little wuss yes. and even the boys don't don't uh respect him man. man and the boys are all tough getting into it with each other she's pulling out uh tommy guns uh, mm-hmm. n- n- new toys for them to try out and the one boy's like oh come on <laughs> it, it bucks like a horse and no it looks excuse. like it bucks like a horse <laughs> kirby <laughs> says it and then shows it whenever he's actually shooting and then subsequently, one by one, the boys are just getting cut down through all of the various weird shit that they get themselves into. Just just shooting a cop who's pulled them over for speeding. Uh, another guy gets killed by his 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 lover. Yeah, there. This is. Uh, there's no ambiguity as to where Kirby falls morally with these characters. Right. These are bad people. Beautiful drawing throughout. The ink wash really is something. I I th- remember reading somewhere that Mark Evanier said that uh, Kirby never really dug uh, black and white comics that much. Hmm. That surprises me because of how well these turned out. And man, he really is bringing it. Like these compositions, every page is full of these kinds of good compositions. It's a new format of pa- of page for him to be working within, and he's handling it great. Yeah, it's a different uh, different ratio. What we mean by that is most comics are two parts wide by three parts tall. Magazines, three parts wide by four parts tall. Sometimes you'll see in reprints or whatever, uh, you'll see weird margins because somebody created art for one of the other formats and then it gets switched. Look at the drama of these panels here, man, with the silhouettes. Really I, strong. I, I honestly don't think I've seen him do that very much before it's awesome too because like you see the picture being crooked on the wall and a lamp falling so like there's stuff happening in every plane there cuts our boy down and then we go back to warden fry well while the boys are uh well the boys are in in the commissary man playing some cards you guys mind if some tourists come by no nah, we don't mind just so they don't tip off our cards <laughs> There's a lot of fun language in in this comic, man. Yeah, set in the 30s, and you got to imagine like a a Kirby childhood memories, right? (laughs) What tough guys were to uh, young Jack Kirby. Here's your shaky cane guardsmen's again. Doesn't this this particular issue feel so much like the shaky cane deadline art? Totally. I mean, shaky cane, it draws this guy with that hat. And he's checking in with uh, Al Capone. Such a weird comic, <laughs> man. It's so weird. It is. It's. It's also that bygone to like the uh, the fifties crime comics. Like you mentioned, crime does not does not pay and stuff. And it it kind of feels like this throwback. He's done. He's done analogs for every story in here. In the Simon Kirby era, he's done more Ma Barker comics with Joe Simon. He's done Al Capone comics with Joe Simon. Uh, the the Kansas Massacre or whatever we're going to get to. Like, he did that comic. Probably with the same title. All the suits that have, like, patterns and stuff, they, they just blow me away. How about, how about these yeah, spreads, Yeah, this is really dude? wild. The girls dancing on the tables. <laughs> and, like, look at, like, even, these are gangster dudes, right? And even then, it's like, it's just burlesque performers and stuff. Like, you, you've you seen Sopranos, and you know what it turns into. And the, But these also look like Kirby ladies with, with, those, with the regalia. So this is my centerfold, and my staples are all bent. 
apparently where the uh, the John Dillinger wanted poster probably was. Mine too. So I don't have that piece to show off, unfortunately. Yeah, I wonder if it's a drawing or a photo. Yeah, I don't know. This is a cool. This is a cool piece right here, man. Four panel piece. Man. Two dudes rolling out, getting into their car, putting that key in that that ignition. Boom. Yeah, the story, of course, they are coming to uh, take over Big Al's territory. Yes. And uh, Capone learns about this and uh, heads off the hitmen, and then the two guys that are slated to kind of take over his rackets are at this party and don't know uh, where, where those hitmen are. Starting to get a little nervous. Al Capone gets incensed that his the demolitions guy that gets brought to him, he's just wearing like a bad hat and no suit. He calls him a crumb. Yes. It says he has no class. No class. This this Al Capone, man, it makes me think of like that Untouchables Robert De Niro. You're just a bunch of talking a badge. You're just a bunch of talking a badge. Yeah, it's it's uh, it's pretty violent what we're going to see here. We're going to send a message back to the boys who uh, sent these new operators out. Yeah, man, because these dudes right here are supposed to be the ones taking over the Chicago territories. But Al Capone, he ain't having none of that, man. Gets those dudes beat down while this one guy just totally gives up. I like how there's a little bit of Kirby tech in the boiler room of hell. <laughs> Once again, right? Just so weird. And then and then launches us into like the text pieces. Just talk about the different economic stratum of early 20th century crime, I guess, man. Here's what it looked like in the cities and uh, famous photos. You know, like this is art history. These photos are pulling. I'm surprised they can run these photos without uh, acknowledgments and, and copyright notices. Yeah, it's before the original uh, copyright of Mickey Mouse lapsed, when stuff really would launch into the public domain a little bit quicker. So, city life, rural life. You see the lines on the faces of the people. And yeah, then, talking about the Dust Bowl. <sighs> Hard times, the 30s, where all this crime comes out of. Get deep into, uh, we have a Mark Evanier, Steve Sherman piece. These are the assistants to Jack Kirby uh, in the impending fourth world while Kirby's there on the west coast. Funeral for a florist. <laughs> Go watch Boardwalk Empire, man. You'll learn all about this dude. Is that who it's based on? I didn't realize. I've never it's, seen it's, that. It's not. So. It's not based on him, but like the Johnny Torrio character, like is in there with the floor, with the uh, flower shop, and all of that. Basically, like, you know, he was running the mob, would kill guys, deliver the few, the the flowers to that funeral, yeah. and incite these wars. And you know, he it was a front, but it started to make so much business that he started to enjoy taking it over, wow. and and handling that part of the 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 deal. Kids. This one, uh, I really love the lettering, and I think the ink washes on this one really strong. Yeah, yeah. Like, I, he did a strip, like, exactly this title, I think, uh, in the Simon Kirby era. Yeah, it makes sense. I love all the costumes. Like, every time a new suit appears, a new hat, any of those details just look great. Even the cars. Absolutely. And I, and I just don't think that he's referencing that much, man. Like, I think he's got some kind of... Not exactly pho uh, like a photographic memory, but damn close. Yeah, this, I mean, look, again, it's that time period of his childhood. I, I feel like this stuff's probably burnt into his head. Right. You know, he's probably watching these movies and the, the, uh, the, the matinees on the weekend and drawing this stuff, you know, in his margins in his notebooks. Yeah. I'm just saying I can't draw a K-card to save my life. Not at all. And my parents had two. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty Boy Floyd is the guy, man. He's cutting down, uh, you know, so cops are looking at him too too close. They want to spring a dude out, and uh, he gets a little little aggressive and, and, and kills everybody, including the guy he was trying to spring out. It's really the black and white artwork that, that sings to me. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's sort of the reason why we're we're looking at this thing right here today. Method of operation. This is the only story that I don't understand in this whole thing. Yeah, me. There's not much going on here. Me, me neither. It's two pages. They have to fill that. I think that's what it is. The the one thing that is noteworthy is that 
I guess that's what modus operandi means. <laughs> yes. And then for shits, right? A couple of Sergio Aragones pages. <laughs> right? Yeah, Sergio, what do you have in the uh, in the in the mobster <laughs> department for humor? <laughs> yeah, funny to see Sergio show up in here. Yeah. Shades of, you know, destroyer duck or something that we would see in the future. Makes sense. You know, he's a Mark West Evanier. Coast cat. Like you know, he's 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 out in California too, and there's you know six people who work in comics in California at this time. Yeah, you got to imagine all these guys having conversations too about uh, because Sergio, you you know, a proponent of creator ownership and things. So kind of neat to see. I just uh, got a haircut this week, and my barber gets Mad Magazine, still published, but no new material, I guess. Yeah. Uh, and they just did a Sergio Aragones issue of. Mad Magazine collecting, you know, work from decades and decades. I mean, I think he starts on there in the 60s. So Amazing. It's, uh, it's kind of cool to see him celebrated like that. And I was excited to see it show up here. I like this drawing of the car bullet written. Let me ask you, Jim, are you excited to get into uh, issue two of In the Days of the Mob? I would, man, if issue two existed, I would own it, Ed. Because <laughs> I like this thing. I, I wish there were a bunch more of these. You're right. The black and white Kirby art is really fantastic. And seeing it in this magazine, slightly oversized format, really a joy. Yes, yes. And there is no issue two. But there are these hardcover, like, Tomorrow's kind of reprints. And those reprints warehouse a bunch of the art that was meant to be in here. So maybe some of these stories are half done penciled uh you know at the very least some extra supplementary materials man so if you want more of in the days of the mob that's where you go and uh you get to see the rest of the stuff but it will be shortly after this that he's going to start to form the uh the fourth world books yeah, Pretty it's, cool a, it's, a, it's a neat piece of history comics history a little kind of a little scene piece I not, love, not easily reprinted, unlike the fourth world. <laughs> I like how the cover is also like uh, like the Kirby collage, but it's on that glossy paper, so it doesn't have to, you know, it doesn't get saturated and zapped like it does whenever those collages are on that newsprint. It's a good, it's a good cover. I like the guns pointing straight out. It reminds me of like Sledgehammer, that old uh, TV show. <laughs> yeah. And there was always a problem whenever the gun would point out at the viewer. That was a, that was apparently a point of contention with them. So uh, yeah, pretty dramatic. It's like eyeballs for him. Fun stuff, man. I guess we're going to have to track down that Spirit Ruled uh, magazine. Sounds like a plan to me. Kayfabers, like, follow, subscribe to the YouTube channel. Hit the bell. We'll notify you when new vids are available. It's out there, man. Join me on Patreon.com slash Jim Rugg, where you can download my out-of-print, hard-to-find zines and mini-comics. You can see my original art and how I make my comics like Street Angel and Octobriana and Aphrodisiac on Patreon.com slash Jim Rugg. Red Room, issue one, on the stands today. Uh, issue two is off to the presses. It's going to be coming out on a monthly basis. Every single issue, completely standalone. Murder on the dark web for fun and profit. Name of the game. Get it put on your pull list at your local comic shop. Uh, Pre-order the comics directly from Fantagraphics. You can do that at my link tree in the description below. There you can also hit up my Patreon, Patreon.com slash Ed Piscor. You can read the comics ahead of time. Three bucks will get you the archive there, and there are more than 100 pages up there as we speak. Subscribe to the Cartoonist Kayfabe e-newsletter at the links below this video to keep up with everything we have going on and coming out. You can also find Cartoonist Kayfabe t-shirts and merchandise at the links below this video. Jimmy, give them one less set of marching orders, man. We're going to be on our way. Read more comics.